Okay, so once we have those bottles rinsed, um, just put aside, we uh, make our cup of sugar. Prepare that right over here. Okay. white sugar I don't take the whole cup I um, actually take exactly 200 grams um, okay you see uh, the glass itself is 141 grams roughly roughly 141 to 143 and the sugar brings it up to 346 so roughly 200 grams of sugar and you can see it is uh, one-third white sugar and two-thirds brown sugar so let's add that into our um, bottle. For that, I've got a funnel, which is a great idea. Makes less of a mess. I had good experiences with uh, filling it half full with hot water and you can see maybe not <laughs> but the sugar starts melting already so that's good now I'll add the yeast which you got right here and for that we only need a teaspoon Spoon of yeast right here. That's all we need. I'll use the funnel again. There we go. And then I want to cool this down with a little bit of cold water. And we should end up with. Uh, little bit more than three well yeah three quarter full bottle of uh, sugar and yeast mixture we do not want to go um, over the last third because once this starts um, once the yeast starts breaking down the sugar and producing co2 and alcohol we will end up having a lot of foam that uh, starts building up and wants to come out of the bottleneck but that's all right because as a backup, we will have our um, bottle of water that will filter not only the foam, but also the uh, alcohol. One, one last thing to do, of course, is uh, shake her well. And since I do not have an enclosed bottle cap, I'll just close with my hand. And usually, you can feel a little bit pressure already, even here. But the whole process will take uh, with this mixture probably five hours to be fully activated okay so what did I do different now you can see nothing I guess <laughs> okay reason being is I put the co2 outlet right in front of the uh, filter inlet 
but as you can see, especially this filter inlet is designed to uh, not let air bubbles into the system. So as you can see, even if it's right on it, the bubbles will just travel along the inlet and not be sucked in. Although this is actually an oversized pump for this tank, um, there's just not enough suction. So I added this black sponge. It's a filter sponge and I just cut a square out of the, the big mat and scooped it over the inlet right to the end of those veins. And the CO2 will travel all the way to the top of the sponge and then get sucked in because it can't go nowhere else. It's too the bubbles are too big to go through the sponge. So there they go through the system and then they'll go through the filter and get whirled around, mix into the water and just end up being in the water. Invisible. Cheap and effective. Okay, so I want you to be really serious with the CO2 because um, it can kill your fish. So make sure, and this, this is a suggestion, get a CO2 test kit. You know, don't just wait for your fish to give you any signs that is, that's bad, that's just bad because that could be already too late. Um, as soon as you have too much CO2 in the tank um, and you see signs on your fish, they could already have some damage on it. So, uh, what the first sign would be, they would look drunk and they might just drop to the bottom and uh, they might just lay there and yeah, just look drunk as if they came just right out of the bar. It's pretty funny, but it's bad, very bad. Or they, of course, start floating, so they're dead right there. And um, that, that would be very bad to wait until then, so better get a test kit. And once you added your CO2, um, if it's just as few as this, you should wait probably a day. But um, I also suggest just test it, you know, once a day. The first time you add it, next day, next day, you know, for at least a week. That's when the CO2 will stabilize in the tank. Uh, depending on the amount of plants, depending on the water, depending on the size, depending on the fish, depending on the filter. It's just a lot of variables that will influence your CO2 production and efficiency. So make sure you have a test kit. Um, it's pretty much straightforward. This one tests with water in the glass. You add a certain amount of um, droplets which will change the water into different colors and um, then you know with the droplets you add, added how many parts per million of CO2 you have in the water. I have 10 parts per million which is right in the butter zone. It is suggested to have 5 to 15 parts per million uh, for a perfect plant growth so I decided to go in the middle and um, I have 10 parts per million and plants are doing great. And one more thing during your um, CO2 production, what will end up happening sometimes is the sugar will sink to the bottom of the bottle and also a couple other things. Um, but what you can do is just shake the bottle like this and you'll get a result. Do that a couple times, you can do that every day to make sure you utilize all the sugar. Just because your CO2 stopped producing doesn't mean necessarily that um, all the sugar has been used up and turned into alcohol and whatever else. So, yeah, that would be her.